Well, it's not to say that the tag is done and dusted, but we've reached a natural lull in the life of the BookTube Booker book tag, so I thought I'd check in. First off, thanks to everyone who shot a BookTube Booker book tag video. As of now, the count is about 30 of you, and it ranges from BookTube newbies to long-standing big guns in the community. I think we even have someone in Spanish that's done the tag. As well, thank you to everyone who filled out the BookTube Booker online poll. I just love seeing a lot of the answers that you provided there. And again, let me reiterate, if you haven't done the tag, this video doesn't mean you shouldn't. If you want to shoot a video, please do. And if you haven't gotten around to filling out the online form, do it. Uh, more data is good data. And I'd love to hear what you have to say. But all that aside, I figure now is a good time to actually dive right in and sift through some of the results. And with that, let's get started with the best in fiction. Cersei by Madeline Miller is clearly the winner this year with 10% of the popular vote. Honorable mention goes to Atesha Mosfeg's My Year of Rest and Relaxation, Richard Powers' The Overstory, and Lenny Zumas's Red Clocks. Now, I know a lot of you complained and wish for a lot more granularity in the fiction category. Categories for sci-fi, romance, fantasy. Um, the Goodreads Choice Awards recently announced their long list, and Lenny Zumas' Red Clocks appears in sci-fi, in Cersei, and fantasy. And I get it, totally reasonable, but I figured with such a small sample size, I assumed we'd be drawing from. As of right now, our current count is about a little over 150 different people. I figured these micro-categories does no one any favors. Same goes for a non-fiction category, which easily could have been split up into history, science, and memoir. The top-rated nonfiction book, as far as you're concerned, is Tara Westover's Educated, with Maggie O'Farrell's I Am, I Am, I Am coming in a close second. Now, the Goodreads Choice long lists regards both of them as memoir and autobiography, but BTB runner-up Michelle McNamara's I'll Be Gone in the Dark, they list as nonfiction. So, fine. The real reason I have these very broad categories is, frankly, it's been a weak reading year for me this year, and Fine, judge me, call me out as a fake booktuber, and really entrench that imposter syndrome that I'm prone to, but it really has been a weak year in reading for me. I've barely read a book a week this year, and so I just end up with these broad categories, because if you have 15 different categories with only 40 books to draw from, a few clunkers end up getting through the cracks. So you end up with these big, broad fiction, nonfiction categories. As the list grows and more people are um, filling out the form, maybe we can create more granular categories. But even then, what do or don't we include? We have sections for sci-fi, fantasy, romance, um, POC authors. So again, really confusing, but that's why I settled on fiction, nonfiction. We'll see how it looks in subsequent years. Anyway, things get a little clear once we get to debut novel with Tommy Orange's There There taking the top spot. The BTB also favored Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman and A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza, both garnering multiple votes. Now, lest you think I had some undue influence in the voting, the first three mirroring very closely my choices, we finally get to Poetry and Short Story Collection and a clear and easy win for Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. Uh, Lauren Groff's Florida came in a close second as far as short story goes, and Dennis Smith's Don't Call Us Dead is clearly the top poetry choice. Actually, I'm a little surprised that there isn't a short story category in the Goodreads Choice Awards. I wasn't really expecting a lot of poetry, and frankly, I'm a little surprised to not see a mention of Rupi Kaur Atticus on the list this time. And The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one by Amanda Loveless is the only Instapoet that does get mentioned in the poll so far. I appreciate and love that we got some multiple votes for Whereas by Lely Long Soldier, as well as Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vong on the poetry side. Aside from poetry, I noticed there's not a lot of YA in the list, and I guess I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping the tag could jump over into the YA booktube. But aside from The Poet X, which gets multiple mentions in favorite fiction, favorite debut, as well as favorite poetry, um, I'm not seeing a lot of YA make the list. So I guess adult booktube and YA booktube stick to their respective corners of the internet. And I guess that's fine. I was just hoping with a tag like this, we could see the intersection of the two where we could meet and discuss things. Work in translation. Clearly, you guys have a lot of love for Korean works in translation. Han Kang's The White Book was the clear winner this year, but... Her earlier work, The Vegetarian, still garnered multiple votes. We also got multiple votes for The Good Son by Yu Jung Jun, as well as The Court Dancer, which I need to pick up, by uh, Kyung Suk Shin. 
Uh, it sounds like a fantastic read. Now, Fever Dream by Samantha Schwabland, still getting lots of love, but the clear second place winner was Convenience Store Woman by uh, Sayaka Murata. Favorite comic? This is a really diverse group with lots of interesting choices, but the clear winner was T-Boys, The Best That We Could Do. Now, there was multiple mentions for Marjorie Liu's Monstrous. Emil Ferris, my favorite thing is Monsters, Brian K. Vaughn's Saga series, as well as The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. Favorite book cover? Can I change my answer? Because the clear winner this year and well-deserved is Circe, specifically the UK hardcover edition. The cover itself is beautiful, but you peel that away and you look at the hardback and it, it is just a stunner. The whole package is just beautiful. Now, lots of love for My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otesha Musfeg, whose cover girl is frankly tired of your shit and is just about done with this year. Really relatable. Now, I know Adam over at Memento Mori is decrying the lazy design of the basic bitch bouquet book cover, but still, lots of love for sans serif text over floral patterns with The Immortalist, The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart, The Overstory, and Everything Under. Favorite author, specifically to their social media presence? No surprise here, Roxanne Gay getting the attention she deserves for her online hustle, with honorable mentions going out to V.E. Schwab as well as N.K. Jemison. I love how Laura Fry called the last two questions part of the booktube Emmys, and she argues that perhaps it's at odds with the prior book-related questions in the poll, but consider this the booktube part of the booktube booker. We'll start with favorite booktube video of the year. Now, the clear channel winner is Adam over at Memento Mori. He got multiple mentions for several of his videos, including Bouquet Book Rant, Kitten Halls, Memento Memos, Feminist Goosebumps with Ursula, as well as The Death of the Book Hall. Books and Lala also got multiple mentions for her 30 Words, 30 Days video, as well as her reading the lowest rated books in her TBR and getting her husband to work her bookstagram for a month. But the clear single video winner with the most votes was Read with Cindy's Basic Bitch Booktube Newbie Tag. Clear winner this year. There's a ton of great content out there. I've done you the favor. I've collected all the best of Booktube videos in a playlist as voted by you. You can check it out down below. Now, as far as favorite new Booktuber, the clear winner this year is Read with Cindy. And she further cements her spot in the top of the list with one of her recent videos interviewing to be a YA protagonist. But we also got lots of love, multiple votes for Mara over at Books Like Whoa, Michelle over at Challenge Thy Shelf, and Matthew Sharapa. Okay, this is starting to feel about as long as a typical award show. So, on top of the typical request for more granularity in the fiction category, we got some interesting suggestions for next year's tag, including best audiobook slash audiobook performance, best bookish adaptation, whether it's TV or film, best original book tag, as well as favorite book review of the year. Now, I've given you a high-level Coles Notes version of all the results, and maybe that's enough. But if you really want to dig into the data, take a look at the long list and build out your TBR pile, I'm going to make a cut of this data available to all of you to check out. I'll have a link to that down below as well. Feel free to mine that data, find some new booktubers or new to you booktubers, and see some new books that you probably haven't checked out this year. Okay, so that's it for the booktube booker book tag, but that's not the end. If you feel so inclined, I'd love for you to take a crack at shooting a video yourself or at least fill out the online poll. Like I said, I'll always be updating the data. If you have a chance, go check it out, download it, and I don't know, sift through it. I'd love to hear your impressions on that data. Maybe shoot a video telling me what you thought of the results. Um, do you notice any trends that I may have missed? I've talked a lot about the top vote getters, but what about that long tail? What does that look like as far as this cross section of the booktube universe? Anyway, I'd love for you to like fritter around with that data and come back to me with some of your results. But in the meantime, that's it for me this week. I hope you all have a great week of reading and we will talk to you soon. Bye.